Hello everybody, Wei-En Physics here and this is something I like to call physics speed run. In today's video, I will attempt to complete 20 completely random multiple choice questions under 20 minutes. And of course, while I'm doing, I will try my best to explain the thought process behind uh, me solving the questions so that you will be able to tackle these questions during your exams. If at any time I'm going too fast, remember you can always pause the video, go to the start of the question and repeat the question as many times as you want. You can also change the speed of the video using the video settings by YouTube. So without further ado, let's go. I am going to get my stopwatch and I will start my stopwatch now. A radio station airs its programs by transmitting waves at a frequency of 140.4 uh, megahertz. What is this frequency in hertz? So 140.4 mega means times 10 to the power of 6. So uh, if I want to move the decimal places to the front by 2 places, I'll have to add another 10 to the power of 2. Okay, so it'll be 1.404 times 10 to the power of uh, 6 plus 2, that's 8. So the answer here would be boy. Now, of course, uh, radio stations, this would be uh, what, your, what, what you actually set to your car's radio. For example, like, uh, what is it? Hits.fm would be 92.9. Uh, so that would be like a 92.9 megahertz, right? That's what it means. Uh, the next question, which physical quantities has the correct SI unit? So length should be in meters. Time should be in seconds. Uh, temperature should be in Kelvin, that's right, not Celsius, not Fahrenheit. And uh, current should be in amperes. So uh, temperature, Kelvin, that is the correct one. Next, when light is reflected from a plane mirror, which of the following is not true? The normal incidence and reflected ray are on the same plane. This one is true because uh, that is why we can draw a reflection diagram as such. Okay, because the incident, the reflected, and the normal rays are all on the same plane. Uh, the angle of incidence is the same as the angle of reflection. Uh, that's right, because I has to be equal to R. The image is inverse, which is true. It is laterally inverse, meaning the right becomes left and left becomes right. And the side of the image is smaller than the size of the object. This is not true, because image size must be exactly the same as the object size when using a plane mirror. Next, which of the following is true about the image formed by a concave lens? So a concave lens looks like this, and we all know that a concave lens is actually a diverging kind of lens. So uh, anything that is diverging, whether it's a concave lens or it's a convex mirror, they always give the same image, right? Image characteristics, which is a DUV, diminished, upright, and virtual so here virtual would be correct okay the next one in an experimental explosion two trolleys a and b which are initially at rest are separated the mass of the trolleys are 1 kg and 2 kg respectively after the explosion trolley a moves at 1.5 meters per second what is the velocity of trolley b after the explosion so this is a conservation of momentum so I'll take M1U1 plus M2U2 is equals to M1V1 plus M2V2, right? The momentum before and the total momentum after must be the same. So initially, both are at rest. So the initial velocities are all zero and everything multiplied by zero will become zero. So zero is equals to uh, mass 1, let's put it as a trolley A, so that's 1 kg, multiplied by the velocity 1.5, plus mass 2, that's uh, 2 kg, and velocity of the trolley B. So here, uh, 1.5, negative 1.5 will be equal to 2 V2, so V2 will be equal to 1.5 divided by 2, which should be 0 0.75, and this should be boy, okay? Which expression can be used to calculate force? So we all know that force is equals to mass times acceleration. This one you should know, yeah? This is uh, Newton's second law, right? And the next one, a ball rolls down a track as shown in figure 45. It is at rest at V, right here, 
Okay, ignore the air resistance and assume that the track is smooth. Which of the following statements is true? So this is a kinetic potential energy question. Yeah? Kinetic energy at Y is less than the kinetic energy at Z or Z. So uh, at the top here, there will be maximum potential energy. Right? So as it goes down, it will lose its potential energy and it will be converted into kinetic energy. So at the bottom most part, right at the bottom most part of the track you will have zero potential energy and maximum kinetic energy so in y this would be max kinetic energy so definitely a is wrong uh, potential energy at v is greater than the kinetic energy at y now this is the highest most part so this is maximum potential energy and this is the lower lowest part which is maximum kinetic energy so all the potential energy from here will actually turn into the kinetic energy here because we're assuming no energy is lost uh, anywhere else so the amount of potential energy must be the same as the amount of kinetic energy here right so b is also wrong kinetic energy at w is the same as the kinetic energy at x which is true because both of them are at the same levels so if you're at the same level you have the same amount of potential energy that means you also have the same amount of kinetic energy okay so this is c uh, a pendulum bob with a mass of m as shown in figure 46 is at rest at position w it makes one complete oscillation from w to z and then to w again what is the potential energy at y so here will be max potential energy at z is also or z is also max pe at x, the lowest most point, this will be max kinetic energy. So at y, the potential energy will be lesser than the maximum, which is mgh, but it will also be more than zero because it is not maximum kinetic energy. When it goes from x to y, right, it will lose some kinetic energy to gain some potential energy. Okay, so the answer would be d, more than zero but less than mgh, which is the maximum. Next, what is the amount of heat that is needed to change 0.1 kg of ice at negative 20 to steam at 100 degrees Celsius? Oh, this is going to be long. So, uh, to change ice from negative 20 to 0, you have to use the mc theta of ice plus uh, ice at 0 to water at 0, that is ml, plus water at 0 to water at 100 degrees Celsius, that's mc theta, and again water at 100 to steam at 100, that is another ml, right? Now the m, they're all the same, so I'm just going to uh, extract the mass out, okay? So the first one, c theta, that will be one, 2100, zero, because that is ice, yeah? We're still at ice. The change in temperature, that's 20 degrees from negative 20 to zero, plus the specific latent heat of fusion, which is L ice. 336000 plus C theta, this is for water, so 4200 multiplied by 100 degrees because you go from 0 to 100, and then plus uh, latent heat of vaporization, 226000. So uh, M here should be 0 0.1, yeah, I'm just gonna put that in, and in total, this should be times 20 plus 336000 plus 4200 times 100 plus 226000 times 0 0.1 this is a 102400 that would be 1.024 times 10 to the power of 5 figure 2 uh, shows three different positions of a trapped column of air in a capillary tube with pressures of p1 uh, p2 and p3 respectively what is the relationship between the gas pressures now uh, I can see straight away that P3 will have the highest pressure because uh, the gas at P3 uh, or, or the gas at C will also experience, besides the atmospheric pressure, it will also experience the pressure from this column of liquid here. So it will have the highest pressure. And on the other hand, uh, in condition B, this gas here will have the least amount of pressure because the column of uh, whatever the column of liquid here is actually acting down, okay, which will uh, take away some of the pressure from P two, right? So it will be P three, then P one, then P two. So this is C. Next, 
what are the characteristics of the image formed by a magnifying glass? Of course, when you look at a magnifying glass, it will be magnified, right? Otherwise, it's not called a magnifying glass. Uh, it should be upright because otherwise, everything you see from a magnifying glass will be upside down, okay? So, it will be magnified and upright and it will be virtual, okay? It will be virtual because uh, it cannot be projected onto something else, right? So, donkey, virtual, upright, and magnified. What is the function of a magnifying glass? So a magnifying glass, uh, you cannot use it to observe stars because that is what a telescope does. Uh, to repair watches, possibly, right? They have this big magnifying glass, then they put the watch underneath and they work with it. Uh, same for diamond and rings. And microorganisms, this would be a microscope. Lah. Okay, so two and three, it will be boy. Right, seven. Oh, sorry, the next one. <laughs> Not seven, I was looking at the page. Right. Which of the following quantities is correctly matched to its SI units? Velocity should be meters per second. Momentum, that's mass times velocity. Sorry, yeah, mass times velocity, so kg times meters per second, so that's correct. Pressure, pressure is force over area, right? So force is newtons or uh, because we know force is uh, mass times acceleration, kg meters per second squared. Uh, pressure is uh, this, um, sorry, pressure is force divided by area. So divide by area, that's meters square. So you should get kg m negative 1 as negative 2. And work would be force times distance. So again, force times distance. So it should be kg meter squared per second squared, right? The mass of the proton is 0 0.000000 blah blah blah, 167 kg. The weight in grams. So first, if I want to change this to grams, I have to multiply it by 1000. And multiplying it by 1000 would bring the decimal places back three spaces. So this three spaces is not the standard notation. It's just changing it to grams. So now, I can see that each of this is uh, three zeros, yeah? So this is a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So seven, right? So if my decimal places is brought all the way back here, that would be seven times three, so 21. And then 22, 23, and 24. So this would be 1.67 times 10 to the power of negative 24, okay? The next question, uh, calculate the magnitude of the resultant force. If you haven't watched the video on resultant forces, remember to go and watch that, right? I'll put a link up in the video and I'll also put a link in the description below, okay? So here I will first uh, find the resultant force on the horizontal axis. So 7 on the left and 10 on the right, that will give me a resultant force of 3 newtons to the right. And so now I just have to resolve uh, 3 and 4. So that will be square root of 3 square plus 4 square. That's square root of 9 plus 16. So square root of 25. That is 5 newtons. For this, figure 34 shows a load of mass 5 kg being pulled by a horizontal force of 64 newtons and tension uh, T. So what is the value of T when the system is in equilibrium? So uh, I will choose to resolve the horizontal forces. I know that. Uh, the horizontal force, Tx, the horizontal uh, component of tension, must be the same as the horizontal force on the other side, which is 64 newtons, right? And to get the horizontal component of T, I have to use uh, T cos 60 degrees, okay? Yeah, T cos 60 degrees is equal to 64 newtons, right? So to find T, I'll just take 64 newtons divided by uh, cos 60. So I'll get um, 64 divided by 0 0.5, which is 128 newtons. Next question, a motorcycle moves with an initial velocity of 20 meters per second. It takes 10 seconds to accelerate to a velocity of 35 meters per second. What is the acceleration of the motorcycle? Again, Suvat, if you haven't watched my Suvat video, uh, 5 minutes physics, remember to watch that also. So, let me just write down what I have. 
s is not given initial velocity 20 uh 10 seconds to accelerate that's 10 and uh velocity final velocity is 35 so we're trying to find the a right i'll use v is equals to u plus a t 35 is equals to 20 plus a times 10 so uh, 15 is equals to 10 a so a should be 1.5 meters per second squared a boy throws a stone vertically upwards to another boy standing at a height of 1.5 meters above. So my S is 1.5. If the stone is thrown up with a velocity of 6, initial velocity, that's 6. Uh, what is the velocity of the stone at the instant when it's caught? So they're trying to find the final velocity. Acceleration would be uh, 9, neg sorry, negative 10, right? Because that is a gravitational acceleration, negative 10 meters per second squared and uh, time is not given so s u v and a i can use v square is equal to u square plus 2 a s uh, v will be equals to square root of 6 square right plus 2 times negative 10 times s 1.5 so square root of 36 minus uh, 2 times 10, that's 20. 20 times 1.5 would be 30. So it goes to square root of 6. The answer would be B. Next, uh, figure 14 shows a mercury barometer at 750 mmHg. Right? So um, the height here, okay, the height here is 750 mm, which is 75 cm. Lah. Okay, what is the pressure of mercury at point A? So the pressure of mercury at point A, because there is no mercury actually pressing down on point A, so the pressure of mercury would be zero, right? It is only feeling the gas pressure instead of the mercury pressure. So the pressure of mercury is zero. What about the pressure of mercury at the base of the container? So the base of the container here, now we know that uh, the 75 cm is actually uh, measured from here right this is 75 okay because that is uh, atmospheric pressure okay now to find out what is the pressure here I just need to know what is the length of mercury right what is the length of the column of mercury here and from this ruler I can see that 0 is at the base and here is 90 so I know that it must be 90 cm of mercury okay uh, pressing down on point C alright so, yes, uh, stop. Yes, okay, so 16 minutes, 55 seconds. That's uh, quite all right. And again, if at any point I am going too fast, you can always just uh, pause the video and then go back and rewatch it again, okay? So I hope this will give you some insight on how to solve uh, multiple choice questions, okay? And hopefully this will help you in your exams, right? If you learn something or if you enjoy this kind of videos remember to like and subscribe the video okay so that i know to make more of these videos in the future right i'm Wayne physics and this was physics speed run remember never stop learning <laughs>